the first step to using your built-in chair is to make sure that the legs of your chair are even with your base or your hip joints, like so. I call this H posture because if I put a stick here, it makes the letter H. And the force is distributed evenly throughout the body. When your legs come together, this forms what I call A posture. You can see how this puts stress on my hip joints, not to mention direct pressure on my low back and neck. Okay. So the second task to discovering your built-in chair is to soften your knees. Most people are standing with locked knees. We want to have soft knees, not bent knees, but soft knees. And then the hips and the legs act like a spring to distribute weight. To get a true appreciation for what I'm talking about here, why don't you go ahead and try it out for yourself. Go ahead, stand up, lock those knees. I'm sure you could feel that your body weight is before your ankle in this orientation. Now go ahead and soften those knees. We don't want to bend them because we're still here. We don't want to bend them forward. We want to soften them and push back like a horse jockey till you feel that weight come to the center of your heel. And then the weight is distributed throughout the body. Try that again. Lock the knees. See how it all slides forward? Yeah, you get a true effect for this. Soften the knees, slide back some till you feel the weight come to the center heel. And there you are, your built-in chair. What I'd like to go over right now is what I call nail-biting habits. Those are just some of the bad posture habits that I see people in often. First, we'll start with sitting. So identify with which one you maybe have. I know people that drive like this. Do you believe it? Feet behind the chair. Feet crossed underneath the chair. Feet out underneath the chair. Did you find out what your nail biting habit is yet? Why don't you go to work and see just exactly what you do all day. So what are your standing nail biting habits? You need to figure out which one you are here also. A hip slinger? A leg crosser? The cutesy stander? The who cares? Yeah, the umpire stands, huh? Real attractive. What are your nail biting habits? So what about sleeping? Everyone has a question about sleeping. So let me ask you this question. Assume this was a regular size pillow and I had this pillow cut in thirds. We had a top third center third, and the bottom third. So on this pillow, where would you say if you slept on your side, your ear was, or if you slept on your back, your head was? Majority of people that I talk to, I find that this is about the location that they have their ear or head. So if you're sleeping on your side, and this is about the location of where your ear is, 
most likely you're sticking that arm up underneath that pillow. You probably think, oh, this feels so comfortable under here. But actually, you're sticking that arm up under there to support your neck. But it's causing a lot of muscle tightness. Let me show you why. Here's your ear. So if your head is on the pillow like this, your neck is not supported at all. So that's why you're putting your arm underneath the pillow. And what you want to do is get your ear to the top of that pillow. You see, now that pillow supports your whole neck. And then this is just your nail biting habit. So get you a pillow in front, get this arm from underneath there and get your head to the top of the pillow. Now you're a back sleeper and you're here at the bottom of the pillow. No longer is the neck supported. We're just here at the back of the head. Now a lot of symptoms that could be caused through this, breathing issues, sleep apnea, tingling and numbness in the hands. So when you're laying on your back, get your head to the back of the pillow up at the top. It supports all the way down, almost between your shoulder blades. Assuming that this was a regular size pillow.